Okay, we're now being recording. recorded. Hello, everyone. This is David Taylor, and welcome to EDT 607, uh, week one live chat. The first thing you should be seeing on your screen is a link to where you can download a 30-day fully functional, free, operative word there, best four-letter word in the English language, free trial of Dreamweaver Creative Cloud. You can also download a free trial of Dreamweaver Creative Suite 5 somewhere. Don't doesn't really matter which version of Dreamweaver you have as long as it's uh, 4 or above. A Creative Cloud is fine, Dreamweaver 4 is fine, Dreamweaver Creative Suite 5 is fine, but you will need a copy of uh, Dreamweaver. And it just so happens, nationals class, national classes are four weeks long, and the Adobe Free Trial is about four weeks long. So everything works out real well. Are there any questions about that that you will need in this class? And like I say, feel free to unmute yourself and Come on in. Uh, if that is fine, you can also type in the chat window, and that is fine as well. Any questions about that, Brenda? Um, and not about that in particular. Just uh, about the the length. I understand that the course is four weeks long, but I'm curious to when the end date is. Would that be December 27th? That is a great question, and thank you very much for asking it, Brenda. I'm going to go ahead and mute you again. Brenda Martinez asked uh, about what the official end date of the course is. You will see in the syllabus, and normally in uh, national, it's the fourth Saturday of the course. Well, uh, I don't quite understand why it's on a Saturday. So for me and my classes, the official end date is the fourth Sunday of the course. Now, having said that, because of the kind of classes that I teach, which had to do with multimedia creation, if a student needs a Monday or a Tuesday after that fourth Sunday, that is fine as well because um, I know, and if you've ever worked with multimedia, you know that you take your best estimate as to how long it's going to take to do something, and then always factor in the flub, always factor in the crash, always factor in the X thing that's going to happen to you that's going to require longer than you think it's going to take. So, Brenda, does that adequately answer your, your question? Yes, it does. Thank you. Okay, great. I have another question that... <laughs> Please do. Okay. Yeah. I, and by the way, the more questions, the better. Okay, awesome. Thanks. So, do you happen to know when the start of the next class after this one is? I'm just curious if a National honors like a Christmas break, just out of curiosity. You know, I, I wish I had an answer to that. Uh -huh. I don't know, Brenda. I really don't know. Um, why don't I make a note of that? It sounds like what you're asking is what happens around Christmas time. Exactly, yes. <laughs> Out of curiosity. And when the next, ca next national course happens. Yes, okay, just great. out of curiosity. I, I believe there is actually a, a break. I think that ends December 19th, and then there's a break until January. I, I can pull up the class next class number in a second. Oh, yeah. thank you, Heather. Yeah. That's my understanding, too. Okay. That the, the last Sunday for this class is the 19th. Hi, Brenda. This is Maria. 
Oh, hi, Maria. Um, yeah, the next class begins January the 4th. Okay, awesome. It's Thank on you my so calendar. Much. Okay. Thank you. For some reason, I did not get that information, or I haven't seen it, but thank oh, you. Um, Dr. Taylor, I do have a question. Yeah, I, and and um, who, is, who is speaking, by the way? Because somebody changed my layout, and I'm not able to see who's speaking now. I, I'm sorry. This is Maria Lomboy. Hi, Maria. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Um, anyway, um, you're requiring us to download the 30-day trial for the Adobe. Is that correct? No, I'm not. Okay. Because there's also, um, I noticed, there, there's also Composer, which is um, a free one that we can download and use to do the website. Am I correct about that? Yes, and that's what okay. I use, and I'm going to be demonstrating uh, how to use it. I think I've also included some videos in class on right, how to use right. it. Because I would rather go for the free. <laughs> Dreamweaver is free as well uh, for the 30 days. That is a free trial for Dreamweaver for the 30 days. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, let me kind of hedge a few bets here. First, National wants you to use Dreamweaver because Dreamweaver is the standard when it comes to HTML composers, our website design. So National does not want you leaving with a degree in educational instructional technology and then somebody says, hey, would you build me a site in Dreamweaver? And you say, I'm sorry, I don't know Dreamweaver. National does not want that to happen. So yes, you must have a copy of Dreamweaver, and you must use it to turn in certain assignments. Okay, thank you. Now, it does not have to be the Creative Cloud version of Dreamweaver. It does not have to be the uh, CS4. It does not have to be CS5. It, it, it is any copy of Dreamweaver that works for you. And for Mac people, uh, you know, that, uh, that's certainly true as well. Because Mac compatible programs are different than Windows compatible programs. Having said that, I also want to make you aware that there are free tools out there. You mentioned one that's Composer with a K that's done by the open source people. There are also uh, free HTML templates out there. Very few people, unless they have the title website designer by their name, very few people actually hard code the sites themselves. More than likely, they go out and they buy a template, and then they know enough about HTML to modify that template to meet the customer needs, the customer's needs. That's usually how it happens today. Because when you buy a template, it usually comes with the flash that you need, the JavaScript that you need, all the kind of bells and whistles that you see on today's contemporary websites. And to build all that stuff from scratch requires a knowledge not not only of HTML, but also uh, Flash and JavaScript, uh, as well as uh, some other, uh, some other back-end programming. That's kind of what I'm saying to you. There's Dreamweaver that you need to learn in this course, because it's going to teach you about HTML. By the way, I found a really great series of beginner HTML videos that I'm going to post uh, for you. And uh, you're, believe me, by the time you finish this course, you're going to know HTML well enough. If not to build a sophisticated site, you're, at least you'll be able to take a template and do something with it. Now, your goal in this course is to build a single web page using Dreamweaver. That is your goal in this course, is to build a single web page. That's a lot different than a website. OK, any other, any other questions? And we're going to get into that in just a moment when we get into your assignments. But I want your questions right now because they're on your mind. And so I want to address them. Is it going to be from scratch, or is it, can we use a, a basic template and then build from there? You're going to use, you can use the templates that come with the CS versions of Dreamweaver.
and I have provided those templates to you for download in your week one assignments. If you have a copy of the Creative Suite version of Dreamweaver, it comes with templates built in. The Creative Cloud, the CC version of Dreamweaver, does not come with templates. And so that's why I gave you templates. But they're very simple HTML templates. When I'm, when I'm talking about templates, I'm talking about the kind that you would buy for 60, 90, 100 bucks on Wix.com that has a flash opener and that has uh, forms, interactive forms built into it, maybe even a discussion board built into it. Now, when you're talking about having a discussion board or a forum on a website, you're talking about, now you're talking about knowing how to program Python or Red Hat or something like that, because now you've got a back-end database. So when I'm talking about templates, you can have either a very simple HTML template with nothing but the HTML, or you can get gradually more sophisticated with a flash opener, uh, JavaScript forms, a interactive discussion, threaded discussion board or forum. You see what I'm saying? So there are templates, and then there are templates. Now let me show you the templates that I uploaded for you. I'm going to launch my version of Dreamweaver. Here's CS4. And I'm going to open a new HTML. Now, here are the templates that you get with a CS version of Dreamweaver. You get one column fixed centered. Okay, We'll click on Create and see what that looks like. See it? You can also uh, create. You can also open something a little more sophisticated. And I will show you the ones that you are supposed to, that you need to open. Here are the ones that I gave to you. Uh, you're going to need a two-column left sidebar header and footer. You can do it either fixed, two-column left sidebar header and footer. You can do, the, do it either fixed or liquid column. Fixed, the content stays the same width no matter how wide the browser window is. Liquid, the content squeezes and expands according to the user's web browser. Most of you are going to do a two-column liquid left sidebar header and footer because that's what the requirements are. So there you go. Two-column, let me minimize this. That's the actual HTML. It's two columns. There's column one, column, column two is here in the middle. And it has links over here that you're going to fill out. And it is also liquid, meaning that as I move my cursor, as you see, the text compresses along with my web browser. So that's, that's a Dreamweaver template. And I have provided for you the Dreamweaver templates. Let me scroll down to them right here. You see them at the bottom. And I was going to go over this. You've got the two-column uh, fixed and the two-column liquid. And those are the two that you will be using in order to fulfill most of the assignments. Now, when it comes to building this web page, do whatever you need to do. I will say this, that each assignment in this class, weeks one through four, gradually has you build your page in Dreamweaver. So that's why I think Dream, Dreamweaver is the optimal program for you to use. In week one, you're going to define the site. In week two, you're going to add header and footer. In week three, you're going to, you know, da-da-da-da-da-da. But I don't want to limit anyone because there might be people in this class who already have knowledge of HTML who can use that knowledge to use a uh, program or a template of their choice. But I'm just saying for your average student coming into this course without a knowledge of HTML, Dreamweaver is the way to go. Let me show you now that this has come up, let me show you what you're working toward. If you click on the Course Resources button in the left side nav bar in this class, you will find the, a page that is labeled Sample Final Projects. 
Ladies and gentlemen, this is what you are working toward. Here are sample projects from past students in this course. You are, you are building a one page in HTML, one page. For example, Michael Doreen is a middle school teacher, and he wanted his students to use Symbaloo in his class. So he did as his project a one page website. See how it's two columns? You've got the column over here on the left with the links in it, and the column in the middle with the content. It's a two-column website. Let's see if he used fixed or liquid. He used, he used fixed. So he used a two-column fix, which is fine. See how now, because my browser is so small, I'll cut off his website. That means he used a fixed column, which is fine. He used two-column fix, and he's got a series of steps in it. He even made some videos. Or, and you can also embed videos that you did not make. He embedded videos that showed his students how to use Symbolo. It's a one-page website. Okay, let's go to Tim Clifton. Tim Clifton teaches biology in West Virginia. Tim Clifton was doing a unit, and in this unit, they were going to study endangered species. So he made a one-page HTML page, one-page website, if you want to call it that. He made a one-page website on endangered species. It's two columns. Here's your, here's your column on the left that contains links and other cool stuff you want to put in. And the column in the middle is your content. You see he's got steps. He's got lists. He, he's got a quiz. He's got embedded videos. He's got a footer. This is your footer down here. This is your footer. And this is the header, this thing up top. It's a one-page website. Diana Havens, how to create a treasurer's report in Excel. Here's her header up at top, PTO accounting, the basics. Here's her column, left column. Here's her middle column. As you can see, she shows students step by step how to create a treasurer's report in Microsoft Excel. So you need to define a need, and here's your footer down here. You need to define a need for your audience, whether it is students or someone in a company. You need to define a need, a very narrow need, and build a one-page HTML website, one page, using Dreamweaver to answer that need. I hope that helps. Let me go back to the classroom. I'll stop sharing. Let's go back to the classroom and see if you guys have any questions about, about that. Go ahead. Hi, this is Christina. Can you hear me? Yes, I can, Christina. Um, so I have just a couple questions then. So um, the links in the left column, do those need to actually link to anything then, or they just need to be filled out? Like they just need to have a title to what it would link to? Both. They, they have a title to what it links to, and when you click on them, it links to a place in your, in your document. They're called internal links, and I will, I will show them to you very quickly. Okay, here we are on the website. You see, now do you see the links black and white on the left? Uh, it's starting. It's okay. taking a minute on my end. Yeah. Welcome okay, to... Yeah. Welcome to the United States, which is ranked, I think, 17th or 18th worldwide for internet connection speed. Nice. So you can have the fastest internet you can get, and you're still 16 places behind South Korea <laughs> and Bosnia. Okay. But that... You know, they say... On the web, you could be talking to anybody or anything, including your dog. I think we just heard somebody's dog. Okay. Now, notice that whenever I click on it, notice that the page jumps. Did the page jump for you? Uh, yes. Okay. Well, no. Then, it just, 
Oh, so it jumps down the, down on the same page, not to exactly a new page. Exactly right. That's one they're called internal links. All right, great. Thank you. And then also, yeah. um, so I was wondering then, I have a, a very rudimentary teacher website that my students can go to to like download my PowerPoint that I just did through Google's own um, uh, website software, whatever you want to call it. So would that be something that I could just do is to actually just kind of recreate that website? Or do you want it to be specifically like a lesson about something? Yeah. Yeah, it has to be a single page lesson. Because okay. you're being introduced to instructional design in this course, the ADDIE model, analysis, design, development, implementation, and evaluation, and because you're being taken through the ADDIE model, you have to show something for the ADDIE model for each stage. And that means developing a one-page website on a specific lesson that has very specific performance objectives, lesson objectives, and terminal objectives. Okay. Uh, and then my last question is, do we have any group assignments in this particular course? No. Okay. All right. That's all I had. Thank you. Okay. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, groups are going to be highly limited in the future workplace. Group work. You're going to be working individually, digitally, online. Other questions? These are great questions. The more questions that you ask, the more information you get, the clearer things are, and the better you will do. Hi, Dr. Taylor. It's Brenda Martinez again. I have a question about this week's assignment, um, the threaded post, and in addition to that, the, um, the other assignment at the end of the week. I think you've got a little three-year-old. I do have a little three-year-old. Because <laughs> I can tell by the language that he that he's not two, uh, because in two you don't get those full sentences like we were just getting. Well, he's actually and two years and nine months. So there you go. Yeah. He's almost well, three. Once you get past two, that's when you start getting the full sentences. As For you guys, sure. As you guys know, and in the 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 um, and I could tell he wasn't four. But, because it was say mommy like that. Okay. The um, what we're going to do now, Brenda, is to go over each assignment individually. Okay. And let me do that, and let's see if that particular question is answered. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Any other kind of big picture questions? Uh, uh, Brenda, is, it sounds like if she's speaking, I think, for the class here, it sounds like you guys are about ready to get into the um, get into the assignments. Uh, week one, uh, learning outcomes. By the way, I, I don't have to go through this stuff on the syllabus, do us. You guys know how to read a syllabus, right? And of course, outline. If there is not anything clear to you on the syllabus, please ask. It's pretty much a just kind of straightforward, here's what we're going to do, here are the outcomes, here are some help links, and then it's in the course outline that you actually get the assignments and their due dates. So hello? let's click on, hello? Oh, okay. You, yeah, yeah, a question, please. If you have yeah, a question, uh, please ask. I don't know if you had mentioned it, but does Dreamweaver, is it, it's compatible with um, Apple, correct, Mac? Yes. Whenever you would, uh, whenever you download your free trial, and who is that speaking? I'll try to learn some voices. Marco. Hi, Marco. Uh, whenever you go to download your free trial, Marco, it will identify you as either a Windows or a Mac user, or they call it OS user. Okay. And you will just download the. Well, actually, it won't let you download the Mac version. I mean, the uh, Windows version if you're a Mac user. Yeah, I think I need to update my software because it just said it wasn't uh, compatible, was not supported anymore. When I what? click on the syllabus, there's n there's nothing there. It just says syllabus, no other words. Do other people have anything? It takes a little bit for it to download. 
I okay. opened it yesterday, and, and, and it's really just the kind of the rules on, like, plagiarism and stuff like that, I think, was all that the syllabus really had in it. The course objectives, the course goals, stuff that you might need to show somebody sometime to show them that you have met certain uh, standards in order to get, in order to renew your certificate or, or, or to get to get a certificate. It's just official stuff. Now the syllabus it might take a little bit for it to download, but it will eventually download. <laughs> okay, so there you see it. Now the course outline that's where you get your uh, actual assignments, their due dates, and their their point values, and that is a Word document. So you will be downloading a Word document, and you will be opening it up. Now, who was that who had problem opening up the syllabus? Who was that? This is Heather. Yeah, I'm, I've been waiting for about 10 minutes, and I've re refreshed several times. I have a brand new Mac Pro, and it's still just it says syllabus at the top. Like I clicked on it and it opens and it says redirect and it just says syllabus at the top. It doesn't say anything else. Oh man. Would you contact tech support and have them tell you what's going on? To tell you the truth, Heather, they're kind of still working out the bugs of this new learning platform. Okay. Were you guys here at National when they used eCollege or have you always known Blackboard? Blackboard only me, myself. Okay. but. They started Blackboard in July or August of this year, and they're still working out a few of the bugs, and it sounds like you might have one. And I mean that strictly in a technical way. Okay, great. No, I, I work with technology all the time, so I, I've tried to clear it, but I'll get a hold of them. So as you see, here are the actual assignments, da da da, -da how they will be graded, your rubrics, and all that kind of stuff. Okay, but that's all official stuff. Basically, if you just listen to the chats, watch the chats, you will know exactly what to do. And let me tell you, show you what I mean. First, you will click on Learning Outcomes. Now, Learning Outcomes is kind of like the syllabus in that there's a lot of official stuff here. But there's also an explanation of the ADDIE model and needs analysis. Let me pump this up. This week, you are doing needs analysis and audience analysis and objective analysis. So you will need to make sure that you have read the Lee and Owens chapters that you are assigned this week so that you know what needs analysis is. Basically, it's a, any need is a problem, and you're the solution, or at least you design the solution. Audience analysis speaks for itself. Objective analysis, you need to know three kinds of objectives. We covered them just a moment ago. Those are lesson objectives. Inside of a lesson, you have performance objectives. And the lesson and objectives and performance objectives lead to the terminal or course objectives or course outcomes. So you definitely need to, to know about analysis, and that's what Lee and Owens is all about. Here is a great website that talks about needs analysis. I think this is much better than your textbook, by the way. This little website is talks about needs analysis. Let me kind of juke things around here so I can get everything on the screen that's being recorded. Needs analysis, goal analysis, and then it goes into the different kinds of objectives and how to write them. Now, don't get all antsy or crazy or worried about this objective stuff. An objective is a simple way of filling in these blanks. Who, when, and what they will do with what accuracy. In other words, who, the student, when, when participating in a simulation, will what, will discover, what will they discover? A new procedure for troubleshooting with what accuracy? 80% accuracy. Do you see how that sentence simply answered who, 
then, the, then comes the word when, then it answered under what circumstances, comma, then comes the verb will, and then the, that's the auxiliary verb, then comes the main verb, which would be discover, write, design, give. What will they write, design, discover, or give, direct object? Then comes the word with, and then comes a percentage of accuracy and the word accuracy. So you literally fill in the blanks of this sentence when writing your objectives, okay? That's all it is. That's all an objective is. If it is a performance objective, it will have certain things in it. If it's a terminal objective, it will refer to the end of the course. By, when? By the end of the course. <laughs> Students, by the end of the course, will. You see what I'm saying? Students, by the end of the lesson, will. So all, all, all of the objectives follow that syntax. Great website. Then we have, see the following criteria to determine whether or not technology is based. This is good, not that you're going to need it in this lesson or this, this uh, particular class, because you're assuming that uh, technology is the best answer for your needs, or a web-based learning object is the best answer for your needs. It's not always that. It's not, it's not always the best answer. Sometimes a smart board is the best answer. Sometimes direct instruction is the best answer. Sometimes a handout. Is, a, is, a, is the best answer. But uh, web-based learning objects are the best answer, especially when you're going to be teaching the, the course over and over again, being taught re repeatedly, especially when there are a lot of elements or evaluation that have to be recorded and tracked, and uh, especially when you need people to uh, have visualization, which multimedia provides, and that certainly speaks to our students today, doesn't it? And especially when you want the, the audience to be able to access it when they're not in class, in other words, remotely or asynchronously. That's when a web-based learning object is a great answer. But that's a, that's a helpful thing to know for your teaching. Now, you're also going to be designing certain things. You'll, you're going to be taking two other, cor two other courses from me. I started to say three. I think it's two other courses for me. And one of those other courses, you're going to learn all about chunking and all about page design. So uh, this stuff is just being mentioned briefly here. The basic templates are going to guide you in this course to chunk successfully. So we don't have to worry about that. You do have to know the different types of, of graphics. Raster graphic is pixel-based, and vector graphics are mathematically based. The thing with pixel-based or raster uh, uh, graphics is that they're very small in size, but you can't make them, when you make them large, they tend to lose their, uh, their focus. They can get blurry or raster, raster, raster sized, as they say, pixelated. Vector graphics, on the other hand, you can blow them up to infinity, and because they're done by mathematical formulas, they're going to look pretty much the same. Uh, file formats, these today are kind of interchangeable. Joint Photographers Excellence Group is a JPEG, uh, graphics interchange format for GIF, and a portable network graphics for PNG. They, they come in all sizes, and they're pretty much interchangeable. It used to be that GIF was the most common, but today with broadband, JPEG and PNG are just as common. Uh, thumbnails, interlaced graphics. And here's that crazy tool. The reason that tool is in here, if you, if you bought a new version of Lee Owens' textbook, it comes with a CD, and that CD has this nifty little tool. It's a kind of automated tool for writing your objectives. And... Cool, that's fine, great, but you don't need it. It's just as easy to copy this syntax right there and simply follow that syntax. Okay, so there is your kind of introduction to things. Let's go back. Let's look at the actual first uh, assignment, which you will, we'll look at is your discussion board assignment. Let's take a look at that. And this is the one that... Heather? Was it Heather who asked about it? Excuse me. No, no, I asked about it. It's Brenda. Brenda. 
Okay. Understanding the internet. What you're going to do is you're going to read uh, Williams and Tollett. You're also going to read, and you can get the answers a lot quicker, I think, uh, out of these websites. Explain that stuff, internet, explain that stuff, World Wide Web, MIT, World Wide Web for the dummies, for the clueless, that's me, and World Wide Web on the intertubes. And what you've got to do is write this 200-300 word narrative about the major technical underpinnings of the internet communications. In other words, you're answering, what are the various technologies that come together to form the World Wide Web? That is a complex question. And to answer that question, you have to know the definition of all of these key terms. So let's go through these key, oh God, we got 15 minutes left. Quickly through the terms, okay? A computer network simply means any two, two or more computers who can talk to each other. A network, a computer network can consist of two home computers, or a computer network could describe the entire internet, which is a system of computers that can talk to each other. Thus, the great democratization that anybody can talk to anybody else at any time if they have a computer. The difference between the internet, the internet is the telecommunications backbone, the the actual pipes the actual cables that carry the traffic. That is the internet. The telecommunications backbone. Sprint, AT&T, those kind of big telecommunication companies, they provide the internet backbone for this country, unfortunately. Unfortunately, we live in a duopoly society, and that's why we don't have good competition. Now, the worldwide Wide web and other applications ride on top of the internet. World Wide Web is simply one application that can ride on top of the internet. And so the, whenever you're, you are accessing a web page, you are there complements of the telecommunications aspect called the internet, the actual physical connection between computers. And the World Wide Web and other applications, Facebook, whatever, tw a Twitter, right on top of it. A web page is what you're building. A web page is any page that is coded in HTML. It begins with an opening HTML tag, angle bracket, HTML close, angle bracket, and it ends with an H HTML tag, angle bracket, back slash, HTML, close angle bracket. It's a single page. It can be long, thus scrolling. Usually you don't want your readers to scroll more than, more than two screens, but it can be infinitely long, a single web page. Now, whenever you get a bunch of web pages and link them together, and maybe they even look the same, then you've got yourself a thing called a website. But a website consists of nothing but web pages. If you have a Facebook page, you have a single page. Put them all together and you got Facebook. Okay, the difference between circuit switching and packet switching. This is what makes modern uh, broadband communications possible. Circuit switching is like talking on the telephone. It's a one-to-one -one connection. It used to be, you used, used to have to dial in on a dial-up modem to AOL to get on the internet. You, and that's what a dial-up modem means. It means an actual telephone connection. And that is a circuit. It's one-to-one. -one. Remember the operators who used to pull in and pull out the plugs? They were, they were making, they were closing a circuit between two people. If I wanted to move my house from Georgia where I live to California where most of you guys live, I have two ways of doing it. I could jack it up, put it on the back of the truck, and drive to California and put it down. Or I could do packet switching, which is what we do today. That's where you take the house, divide it into parts, put each part in a crate, label each part, and have a bunch of trucks come and get it and say, get to California as fast as you can by any route you can. And when they get to California, follow, follow the directions for reconstructing the house. So what happens whenever you send an email today? That email gets broken up into packets, little bitty packets. And those packets get to their destination the fastest way they can. They don't all follow the same route. 
And then when they get to the destination, they are put together by what's called the TCP IP protocol. TCP IP is called the Internet Protocol or Internet Suite. TCP stands for Transfer, Con Transfer Control Protocol and IP stands for Internet Pro Protocol. TCP is the thing that labels each of those packets and gives assembly instructions for the receiver. When you receive them, there's another layer of TCP that says, ah, oh, I can read your instructions and I know how to put that message back together. And that's the Internet Protocol. So those are the underpinnings of some of the underpinnings of today's Internet. Also, you need to know the difference between a local area network and a wide area network. Local area network is something that is local to you within a company, let's say, or um, and then as opposed to a wide area network, let's say you work for a global company, and then each office in that company is connected together. That would be a wide area network. Now, and I, I don't know why I divided these like this, because I want you to contrast Ethernet versus wireless. Ethernet is a nonsense term. It means absolutely nothing. It's a made-up word. And it simply means the wire connection, if you, connecting to the Internet via a cable, coaxial cable. Wi-Fi is another nonsense word, made-up word, that stands for any wireless network. So those are the two ways that we connect to the Internet, either wireless or with a, a coaxial cable Ethernet. Okay, now let's get into this stuff. Uh, Tim Berners-Lee, Sir Tim Berners-Lee, please, invented two things that make our, our presence here tonight possible. He invented HTTP and HTML. HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. A protocol is a set of rules. It's like etiquette. And everybody agrees to speak the same language and follow the same rules. If I say, give me X, you understand that, and, and you reply, OK, here is X. It's a standard set of rules or a protocol. And then HTML is simply a markup language. Uh, Tim Berners-Lee took ASCII, which is uh, uh, Standard Code Part 2, American Standard Code Part 2, and he learned how to put tags in front of it so that everybody in the world who agrees to use the HTML protocol knows that angle bracket, angle bracket B, angle bracket means boldface. Angle bracket H1, angle bracket means level one heading. Angle bracket BR, angle bracket means break space. In other words, it's another form of a protocol that everybody agrees upon. And that's why you have to learn HTML. You're learning to speak a language that everybody else speaks. URL is, can be either Uniform Resource Locator or Uniform Resource Locator. You know what those are. A hyperlink is any set of text that has a little piece of JavaScript that means that whenever you click on it, it activates your web browser to make a request. Speaking of which, your web browser can be either a client or a host. A client is somebody who asks for something. A, a host is somebody who gives something. Most often, you are a client. But you can also turn your server, your computer, into a host if you wanted to. And that's what happens in file sharing on the Internet. You're both, you're both host and client. An ISP is Internet Service Providers. They are the people who are connected directly to the Internet via the backbone provided by Sprint, AT&T, um, depending in Europe, Unicode, wh whoever. They are the ones connected to the backbone. And so if you want a website, you have to rent space from your ISP. Host, of course, that means that, you're, that you are say, sitting there saying, go ahead, ask me. I will give you information. Domain name, you know what that is. Uh, domain name consists of uh, the name of the site versus the dot whatever, a dot com, dot edu, dot whatever. WYSIWYG is what you see is what you get. Now, on this web page right here, let me do this. On this web page right here, it looks like something you can read, correct? That's because what, what you're seeing is what you're getting. Now, I can edit this two ways. I can go into edit mode here 
and I can edit, edit it with this WYSIWYG editor. I can highlight this, and I can make it a different size. There, I made it a bigger size. But you know what? Behind every WYSIWYG is that right there, code. What I just did, make that higher to make, to make that bigger, what I just did, I changed it to a level 4 heading. I can go back and I can make it an even larger heading. Now when I look at the code, now when I look at the code, you'll see that oh, all it did was put in font size large in, in front of it. That's the nature of that particular WYSIWYG. So behind every WYSIWYG, even Microsoft Word, is its code. The thing with Microsoft Word is you're prevented from seeing the code. Or if you do see it, I think somebody comes and arrests you or something like that if you break into it. But HTML is free to everybody. That is what is going on with a WYSIWYG. Very important term for you to know. What you see is what you get. Looks just like a word processor. But always know behind it is the code. And in this class, you are learning the code. FTP is File Transfer Protocol. How, do I, how did I get this file up for you to see? I had to transfer the file to, some, to National University's server. And I did that via FTP. See, FTP is another protocol. You've got HTTP, that's a protocol. And uh, you've got FTP, that's another protocol. Difference between web directory and web folder. <clears throat> We're going to get into later. You don't have to know that right now, and really that doesn't have to be a part of your answer. Also notice that as part of your answer, I did give you student models to follow. So if you click on these student models, they will download a Word document, and you open up that Word document, and you will see how previous students have answered that's this particular question by working in those terms and referencing at least one other source besides your textbook. I know I'm running out of time here. I apologize. So that's your discussion board. You write a 200 to 300 word narrative just like the one you see in the model that references as many of those words as you can fit in. Okay, any questions about that? Um, I just want to clarify, we only need to respond to one other person. Oh, you caught me. What does it say? Does it say one other person? Or does it say I, two? Usually it says two. Right. That's why I wanted to clarify, because it, it says to respond to one other. So I just wanted to make sure that that was accurate. Do, do just one. Just okay. One. Thank you. Do whatever it says. I'll change it to the next time. Okay. I don't know why it says one. Huh? This is Brenda. I have another question. When is it due? Yeah. Everything, everything in this class is due on Sunday night, midnight. Okay, thank you. There are no, I know exactly what you're asking. Some teachers have midweek discussion board posts, don't they? I do not. I don't believe in it. I'm not saying the other people are wrong. I'm just saying we have different practices. I do not believe in the midweek discussion board post. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much for clarifying that. You're welcome. Okay, your assignment number one. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to write a paper. And in this paper, you're going to do the following five things. You're going to define a learning object. Then you're going to do a needs analysis summary for the one page thing you're working on. So yeah, between now and Sunday, you've got to think of that one thing you're working on, which is another reason I put up all those sample projects, to show you how to narrow it down to a single little skill, a single little something that you want to teach. You've got to describe your target audience. You, then you've got to write some uh, objective analyses. You've got to write at least two learning or performance objectives. Now. Here are three models from three past students, each in a Word document, and they're, they're each formatted exactly the same. Here is Angela's 
First, you've got definition of a learning object. Then you've got a needs analysis summary. Then you've got the target audience. Then you've got the objective analysis summary, and you get her objectives that she writes right here. Remember, you must write at least two performance objectives. She also wrote some terminal objectives, and she also wrote some lesson objectives. So you simply follow what these people did. Here is another one. And what I'm pointing, what I want you to see is that they're each formatted the same. In the scroll bar, learning objects. What is a learning object? Long answer. Needs assessment. So this, this person teaches in Chaparral Elementary School in San Diego, and he had identified a single skill that he wanted to build a single web page about. That was the need or the problem he was solving with web content. Then he described his audience, which was fellow teachers at that Chaparral Elementary School. And then he wrote his objectives. In other words, what his audience would be able to do. A performance objective, followed by a terminal objective, performance objective, terminal objective, lesson objectives. Uh, one more from Margaret. They're all formatted exactly the same. So all you have to do is read these models, and you will know what to do on this assignment. Now, the other assignment that you have is your first assignment in Dreamweaver. And I want you to simply turn in an HTML page that has these things on it right here. Turn in an HTML page that has those things on it. And to do that, you simply open up Dreamweaver, open up a blank page. Boy, these things are hard to see when you're file sharing. Open up a blank page. OK. You open up a blank page. There's your code on the left. And you put that stuff in there. And you notice that over here, look at what you got. First, you got the document type. Here's your open angle bracket. Let me pump this up so you can see it. OK, over here, you have your opening HTML tag. It's going to it tells what standard it's following, the 1999 Web3 XHMTL standard. There's your head bracket. Here's your uh, metadata. The metadata describes what's in doesn't show up, but it describes what's in. Then comes your title. So far, the title is untitled, but I could change that to assignment one if I wanted to. Then the closing of the head, and here's the body. And notice here's the text, title, description, objectives. And I can, make, I can um, format that text if I, want, if I wanted to. I could make it a different font. I could both face it. And then notice I have what's called an unordered list. UL stands for unordered list. And then LI stands for list item. List item one, close list item. Next list item, close list item. And I'll show you how to do that automatically in, in uh, thing. If I type in step one, step two, step three, and I want to put them in a bullet list, all I do is highlight them, go to format, and select list, and you have the choice between unordered list, that means bullets, or an ordered list, that means numbers, or a definition list, that means indent, like a definition. I'm going to do unordered bullet list, and there it is. Now to save it, all you do is go to file, save as, and save it as assignment one, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, and click on save, and then simply go to your desktop and get that file. Where's my desktop? There's, there's the file. 
go to your desktop, get that file, and turn it in. Notice what happens when I click on it. Here's an HTML file. I click on it. It opens up in my default browser. That's the first step that you take in your HTML. You open up Dreamweaver and make sure that you're that you're in the right view. There are, there's some different views up here. Right now I'm in code and design view. I can be just in design view. There I have just the WYSIWYG. Or I can go to split view or I can go to only the code view. Now if you're if you're in live view, uh, live view, there's there's nothing you can do. It's not going to let you edit it at all if you're in live view. You do have to be in design view. The uh, split, which shows you the HTML on the left and the uh, WYSIWYG on the right. Produce this, and that is all I got to say. I got to let you guys out of here. I'm sorry I kept you long. It, but that's usually the case with the first night, and I apologize.